Hey guys, welcome to today's lesson on Star Pro Connect Edition. In today's lesson, we are going to be talking about the rough foundation of a G Plus four story building. So, what we've done now, we've assigned the property, we've assigned the slab and beam, then we've assigned support as fixed support at this point. Then we have our loadings. For the loadings, we have a dead load, which includes the self weight weight of partitions on the block and the dead load for the slab so including the self width of slab and other finishes then for the live load you can see our live load so double click it and we can see the live load of minus 1.5 for residential so we have the service load one dead and one live and we also have for our ultimate which is 1.3 times dead and 1.5 times live so what we'll do is we'll run the analysis, go to post-processing. Now we want to check the size of our rack slab if it's going to be sufficient. So we'll go to reactions. Then on this table now we can see the load combination one, load case one and load case two. So all we need to do is to get the reaction. So we add the two reactions for the dead and live load together. So don't forget for the foundation we need the service load. So let's go there. So we'll go to calculator. Now we have 9078.461 9078.461 plus 864 okay plus 864 so this is the total service load on the foundation this is the value we have and we've assumed our soil bearing capacity to be 70 kN per meter square we are going to divide it by 17 to so divide it by 70 okay so this is the value we get so this is our area this is should be the minimum area we should get at our base so we have 142 so let's find the square root so we can just do that so we need a minimum value of 11.9 by 11.9 okay so let's go to our base and let's measure it so let's go back to geometry so let's um pick any layer we want go to view front view select no cursor no cursor highlight this code create a new view and click ok so let's view from the top so go to utilities node choose to so node to node distance from here to here we have 12 meters and from here to here we have another 12 meters so it means we are safe because the minimum we should get is 11.9 so in another case for example if you have a value that is greater than this let's say the, the uh, square root is about 13 so what you need to do is we need to increase the area of your foundation footing so we've got this already but the next thing we are going to do is remove the distance and we are going to place our plates and beams so the reason why i'm placing the beams is to reduce punching on my slab so let's go there now so go back to geometry then we'll add beams select this add beams or another thing you can do is let me select this and delete another thing you can do is select your node cursor select node cursor i like this node come here connect along x and connect along Dead. okay so we are done with this but the next thing i'll do is go to property so i'll go to design and i want my beam to be 1.2 meters deep 1.2 meters deep and 0.23 width now, the reason why i'm using 1.2 is to reduce punching shear so go there assign to view assign to view okay so we are done with that next thing i'm going to do now is i'm going to infill this place with plates the two new plates have been created okay. so the thickness of my plate i'm going to try a thickness of 0.2 so let's see what will happen and close so assign to view assign to view yes now we are done with that i'll go to my support and delete this delete this support so before that, let's go to display the old structure and let's see how the structure will be in reality. So this is what we want. We want this type of workflow raft. Now this workflow raft in the sense that we know the total load coming on it 
is going to be uplifted by the soil. So upward force equals to downward force. So the load coming on this, which we are going to calculate later, is going to be acting on the slab and is going to be acting on the beam. Okay. But if we remove the beam, it's going to act fully on the slab. So what we'll do now is we'll select our plate cursor. So come here, select plate cursor. Highlight the whole structure. Now generate plate mesh. Generate plate mesh. So you can divide it as much as you want. I'll click OK and quadrilateral meshing. Okay. So we've got this. Now we need to create. So we'll go to create. Then we'll go to foundation. So we have this foundation. So we have what we want elastic mats and plate mat. So in this case, we'll be choosing plate mat. We select plate mat and you select the direction. So let's select Y. And we need to get this subgrade modulus. So there is a book by Balls and he has spoken about the range of subgrade modulus. So in our case, we know that this is where our soil is. This is the range of our soil. He has given a formula here already, which is 40 times factor of safety times uh soil bearing capacity but to, uh, to save time we'll just use a range from here so we are going to be using a range of forty five thousand. we'll go back to start pro and we'll go to subgrade modulus and put forty five thousand. okay we we'll select it click add then now uh, we'll go to the front view highlight the plates at the bottom here and assign this to it so assign to select sorry i need to assign it to these plates Okay, so assign to selected plates, then assign it. Okay. So now, in this case, you will see that the all the loads acting from top. When we run the analysis, you will see that on the beams is going to be inverted because we know for normal suspended beams is going to sag at this place, then at the support is going to hog. But when we see this beam, we are going to see the invert invert of it. So what we'll do now is go to Post processing and let's run the analysis okay so let's run the analysis so we have two warnings so let's see what the warnings are first if there's something we can correct okay so you can see if let me turn this one off so you can see self weight is okay so one in one or more joints are in multiple support commands so you can see this one 34 and self weight is applied okay so what we'll do now is Okay, so this warning will check it let's see if they are not duplicates okay, so let's go to support now we can see this now the reason why it is happening is because it is finely meshed so we can actually ignore that um, warning so we just go back to the loading and we'll go to self weight self weight and assign it to you assign it to so we've got that then we'll rerun the analysis again let's go to the post processing okay so what we are interested in this case now is to just see the ultimate because we'll be using the ultimate to design this so one of my deflection now let's see if the bending moment direction so we can see for the first one let me change this rather combination ultimate okay so you can see the bending moment here so Select your beam cursor. Select your beam cursor. Double click it. Now go to shear bending and you can choose the combination you want. So you can see it at this point, it is sagging at the mid spine. Then while it gets to the support, it is hugging. But we can see it for our wrapped foundation, the wrapped beam. At the mid span, it is hugging. Whilst at the support, it is sagging. This is due to the load coming and the soil. So when we are doing the wrap foundation, it is actually inversely proportional. It is inverse of what is happening on the suspended floor. So the soil is pushing the plates up. So that is what is really happening. While the axial load on the coulomb is creating the sagging at the support. So we can see something similar to that. So once we are done with the analysis, we can get get uh stresses our uh, bending moments for the design so this one i will know this is our ultimate let's pick for example you select this double click it and use the shear bending and use this 
then go to the location you want maybe this is what you want for the moment the moment and the support moment so you can use it to get your reinforcements okay so the next thing we can also do now is to check our stresses on our slab so we'll go to plate results go to ultimate let's start with the maximum absolutes to apply okay so you can see the contour so let me Go to the front view and select my plate cursor. Highlight it, create a new view. Click OK. Yes. You can see it. Now there's a way of turning off the supports. You go to labels. Yes. To look for supports. Okay, so support apply. See the all gone off. So you can see the stresses, how stressed the plates are. So you can if you want to reduce the stresses you can increase the thickness and it will be reduced what i'll do now is go to place stress again and i'm going to check my mx the local apply so you can see the moment in my mx direction now to know your mx direction let me come back here and press shift t so once you select it you can see the x and the y so you need to know where they are going so I'm going to turn it off again by pressing Shift T and I'll go to plate results. Okay, so we've checked our MX direction. You can see the maximum is 25, and at this negative part is minus 25. So you watch my previous video on how I explained the top and the bottom of plates. So we can see this. Let's see the MY. So it's almost similar because it's a square. You can see the MY. Now the last, the last but not the least, we can see the MXY. This is the torsional moment need calculating your stresses on your slab. So thank you for watching today's video on raft foundation. If you have any question, you can drop it in the comment section. Thank you very much.